Hey, what's up? <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Tink. That's M I C C, not M I S S. You already know the channel's not your pulse TV. Sorry that this video is late, y'all. Um, I had to go to the damn doctor on Tuesday. If you know me, or even on my Instagram, on my Facebook, you know, your girl. Yeah, she's a uh, what? Oh, not 100% healthy person. You know, I'm a liver transplant patient. You know, if you don't know, check out the picture. You'll see. Check that out. All right, so you saw my picture, you saw my scar, yeah. So I had to go get that, you know, I had to go get, check out my primary care. And then, uh, what day it is, Lord Jesus, on the damn 29th, your girl has to go see a specialist. So, you know, got to make sure my health is all good, you know, you know. Ain't 100% healthy like everybody else, but hey, that's what makes me different. So I had to do that, and then your girl got called in for work early yesterday. So that's why this video is coming out on Thursday instead of Wednesday. Do apologize for that, but let's just get into it. Love and Hip Hop, Season 6, Episode 2, Family Matters. Let's get into it. Alright, so basically the episode picks up where we left off. We see um, Jocelyn and Stevie, they all talk. She all emotional, was not feeling that weird girl, but okay. Um, you know, about... You know who her baby daddy is you know saying that you know she wouldn't lie about her baby daddy you know she all emotional putting on the waterworks and barely saw a tear fall or whatever you know mm -hmm. and stevie you know he like seeing Justin, you know got me thinking i shouldn't have been away and all this stuff but we all know what Justin did and i i'm not even i'm not even faulting stevie on how he feels because Justin did come out to his character come out especially that shit when he was talking about he was you know molesting little a and stuff which was not cool on any type of level Justin. i'm sorry so i feel that but you know Justin talking about look i want you to take a dna test I would never lie about my baby daddy, whatever. And, you know, she basically said she's taking the baby to um to, to Miami. You know, her mind is made up. And Stevie like, but if it's my child, you ain't said. I mean, from what I, you know, vividly seen, because I don't really be on their social media and all that. Stevie J is the baby daddy. I believe Stevie has been around the baby. I don't know if Jocelyn stays in Atlanta or if Jocelyn stays in Miami. Who cares? But she, at this time, what she's saying, she made up her mind. So, you know. He talking about he going to take the test. She going to be all right. He go over there and kiss on the foul head. You know what I'm saying? Rub her stomach and stuff. And she all good. For now. But I said, okay, it is what it is. Um, good luck with that. Then we see uh, Jasmine. Now, I ain't going to lie. When I saw that damn meme from Alexander Rogers about how um, Jasmine looked like that damn worm from uh, Busy Town. I, I can't think of the full name. But I used to watch that show when I was a damn kid. Lord, that shit. <laughs> that shit was funny as hell Oh my goodness that was so funny But I didn't even think about it She do look like that worm from Busy Town To be riding in that little apple Okay <laughs> Took it back on that one But you know she talking about um, You know she made the mistake With basically mentioning who her baby daddy is Or whatever this that and third Girl we all know Mona told you to put that in the script I'm just saying That's how I feel but How you how you did not know that wasn't a good idea? Whatever. Anyways, she's meeting up with Rob. Okay, you know, Rob, Mimi, ex-boyfriend, or whatever, the fraud, or whatever, that put Mimi in jail. And, then, you know, he's talking about he just got out of jail for money laundering. So, mmm. But, okay. So, he already know about the whole Kurt and, um, you know, the bunion head and Jasmine uh, situation or whatever. About the baby and everything. And he's been stepping up and taking care of the baby. And I guess bunion head has been sending, you know, you know, the worm some damn money or whatever and i'm like okay that's cool okay that's cool that's cool that's cool that's cool whatever you know so she tells him what happened and he basically said you know why would you even say that which i agree in that sense like that wasn't anybody's business but you basically couldn't keep a secret now it's out there so now y'all gotta go from plan a to plan b so i don't know how that's gonna go but whatever, good luck to you on that, girl. My thing is you should have kept your mouth shut about bunging your head and your baby because that was nobody's business but yours. But, again, could have been written in the script. We all know it's acting at its worst. So, I guess. Let's get to some more shit. All right, next we see Tommy. You know, she got out of jail. You know, she on her way home. Apparently, nobody at the house been picking up her calls, not even her mama. So, she home. She started going to fuck off. Well, not started going to fuck off on her mama. Basically, she was just talking to her all, you know, chill. But you could tell 
that's intention is tone. And all of a sudden, her bail bondsmen come in that she been knowing for 10 years. And I'm like, damn, but I understand she had a hard life. And then all of a sudden, her mama and her just start arguing. Her mama talk about, you know, take her back, Jerry, or whatever. And that's when the sh I was like, well, damn. I We all know everybody, mother-daughter relationship is different. But y'all need Jesus. Uh, mama need to call that damn... um. That damn what 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 was that damn psychiatrist that talked that tried to talk to Jocelyn and Stevie when uh Jocelyn slapped the shit out of Stevie in season one? Y'all need him or Ayana because Lord, I'm talking about they going back and forth. She come out calling mama a bitch a hoe. Her mama calling her bitch talking about stuff. I'm like, whew, thank God for my relationship with my mama because Lord knows if I talk to Cheryl like that. I, I, I wouldn't be seeing out of none of these. And all of these would be gone. Okay? Straight Shanae style. None of these. None of these. Okay? But everybody mother-daughter relationship is different. But my thing is, girl, how are you going off on your mama when she the one watching your kids? I don't know if it was acting or the truth, but y'all need to get that shit together. I was like, whew. All right. But like I said, we don't know their true history, their true background. Because you know how Tommy put it. She been in and out of, you know, foster care, the streets, ways, hurting everybody else. But girl, that's your mama. But mama, damn. I'm going to pray for y'all. I'm going to pray for y'all. Oh, Lord. Mm hmm. Let's go and get to some more shit. All right. So after that, we see Mama D doing her video in that order. You know, she says she an international superstar. Okay, Confidence is key. That's all I gotta say. Cute song though. Don't get me wrong. It's a cute song. But of course, she already talking that cash money shit about her nothing ass husband Ernest. Girl. Okay. And then all of a sudden they go and talk or whatever. And now it seems like the roles don't reverse. Now it seems like Mama D is scrappy and um um uh, Ernest Mama is Mama D because she got an issue with the fact that uh Ernest is done doing stuff. You know, basically his mama is basically coming in the picture, and I'm like. Well, if that ain't the pot calling the kettle black, uh, Mama D, ain't you the main one from season one? That was that meddling ass mama. I'm talking about from uh, Erica Dixon to Bucky to Erica Pinkin and Bambi. Come on now. Now you mad? So obviously now um, Ernie dropped the tour that his mama going to be moving down there. And, you know, Mama D got an issue about it. And I'm like, Lord, really? Really, Mama D? Girl, by... You do the same shit. You have done the same shit. It's just your karma, girl. Now you see what Scrappy and everybody else was talking about with your meddling ass, okay? Talk about the king and the palace and all of this. Now you see how that shit really feels. So whatever, Mama D. Just be glad you got a man. And he trying and he being supportive. Half of these hoes can't even get someone to be supportive like he is. Whatever. Anyways, next we see um, Jocelyn and Melissa with her fine ass. Oof. Mm, mm, mm. Let's find me. I, you know, I like me chocolate skin, you know, brown skin, you know. You know. Let's find fuck. Hey, girl. How you doing? Let me stop. Anyways, they over there talking or whatever. Jocelyn just love having that belly out, girl. I ain't mad at you, girl. Do however you want to share your pregnancy, how you want to share your pregnancy, girl, but whatever. So, apparently, she been over at Stevie's house. She ain't had sex with Stevie or nothing like that. She says, I, I guess, I don't know, whatever. I went there, so who can I? But her ass done fucked around and took some damn draws from Stevie house because she don't trust Stevie that's going to get this DNA test. So her and Melissa now are going to go and take the damn draws to the damn, uh, I guess, the DNA people, you know, and see if he's the baby daddy. I'm like, okay, girl, you just... Walking around with dirty drawers. I'm standing in a Ziploc bag. I'm standing be clean, but I wouldn't have been touching. I would have had some forceps or something. Like, no. No. Okay. All right. I would have been like, listen, girl, get them drawers on my face, girl. Get them get them drawers. This is not Martin. Okay. When Tommy was like, got the drawers. Okay. Got the drawers. This ain't that. Okay. Get them drawers on my face. But okay. I guess if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. You claim you don't trust them. Whatever, girl. I guess. So, um... Press on. We see the rare rooster. She over there cockadoodling her ass over to damn um the worm, you know, Jasmine, to get the tea on what's going on between Bunion Head and uh, you know, what's the name? Um uh, Rashida. Now, I don't know, but we all know the rooster is messy as hell, so she need her receipt so that way she could cockadoodle do at the damn, you know, 
Whatever she want to cock a doo at. I don't know if it's from the sun up, sun down. Whatever. She just need the receipts to prove it. We all know the rooster's messy as hell. Then we see um, Jock ass meeting up with Rob to get his side of the scoop. You know, I guess the brother's side of the damn scoop was going on with Bunny Head and Jasmine. So both, um, you know, the worm and Rob the fraud, they all, you know what I'm saying, basically sharing notes. You know, she's showing her basically... Um, the worm is showing, you know, the rooster, basically, you know, the uh, text messages, apparently, uh, Bunyahead got another phone, Bunyahead been playing, paying the bills, uh, worm has also been staying in, I guess, they old, uh, Bunyahead and Rashida's old building or whatever, been around the baby, Bun um, Bunyahead done bought Carter around the worm, worm done been around some family members and friends, even, you know, Rob the Fraud is saying that shit, and I'm like, well, damn. You know, and Jock, he's so damn stupid. Jock talking about that look like her, but then again, you know, maybe somebody put bunny head, you know, face on the body. Shut up, Jock. But, you know, basically the receipts is out there. And, you know, the rare rooster feels some type of way. My thing is, okay, girl, I don't know if that was your place, but I understand, you know, anything for a storyline, and we all know the rooster's messy. I just, I don't know if I would have been there. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know because I feel like that's just meddling a little bit too much for me. But I don't know anybody other friend would have been there or whatever. I'm, I'm just saying. But whatever. So look like the secret is out. And Bunny Head been lying like we all know. And the worm, she looking look, you know, I guess she want to tell her side. But you don't look any better either, girl. I'm just saying both of y'all look bad. We all know Bunny Head look worse because Bunny Head, you know, is married, but you look just as bad too, girl. But I'm saying you want to clear your name. But my thing is maybe you should have been telling that to the wife and not the friend because he's married. And then, you know, Bunny Head, stop lying to your wife. So I can't wait till all this shit come out. So I guess let's get to some more shit. All right. So, um... After that, and I, I don't know if it's going to be in order or not. I'm going to try to stay in order. Y'all know how I do. Sometimes I be in it. Sometimes I don't. After that, we see basically um, Mama D over there shopping or whatever. Scrappy come down or whatever. Basically, he got a text message talking about 911. She's shopping because she upset. And she tells Scrappy pretty much what's going on with, you know, um, Ernest and his mama. And I love how Scrappy called her ass. I was like, uh, wait a minute. Don't you do the same thing? I'm just saying. And then when she, you know, bring up, you know, Bambi, that's when we find out that pretty much uh, Bambi and Scrappy, they on the rock. Scrappy haven't been staying at home. They've been arguing over petty stuff. He's stubborn. Bambi petty. And he just packed this shit and go. Now he's staying in a hotel. I was like, well, damn. But I fell the fuck out when Mama D said it took me a while for me to get used to Bambi and her hooves. Lord... Mama D, you ain't shit. You ain't shit for that. That shit was fun. She said her oh, hooves. Really? But well, I guess. So she gonna have a dinner or whatever. And uh, with invite the whole family. And Scrappy like, I'm gonna see, you know, about bringing Bambi or whatever. So I'm just saying. But like, I'm sorry, Mama D. It's your karma. What goes around, come around. You can't be doing that shit to people and think that shit ain't gonna come back on you. And especially how old you are, you should know better. You should have been seen that instead of getting mad at, uh, um, you know, Ernest and realize, well, I did do this to my son. But we all know how Mama D is, but I guess. Let's get to some more shit. All right, so after Mama D and Scrap do that little discussion, I forgot to mention Scrappy, that hairstyle got to go. Hell no. Them two braids and that ass ponytail? No, Scrap. No. Anyways, we see Tommy coming through. Tommy, you look good, girl. I like them red shoes. Them red shoes is badass and that hell. I ain't, I ain't even gonna front. Jazz crazy as shit. But your ass can dress. I ain't like that first episode with the flurries and stuff. But this episode, this and the fur and the... You look good, girl. Yes, you do. So, of course, she meet up with none other than KK, mm-hmm, the felon, mm-hmm, and talk about her issues that's going on. Basically, brief her in the fact, that, the fact that she went to jail, the fact that, you know, um, uh, the stuff going on with her mama. We all see that Tommy don't give a fuck about Jocelyn being pregnant. I'm like, um, Joc I'm not Jocelyn, but Tommy, watch your mouth. Especially with you being recorded, okay, girl? Because you might not care, but baby, uh, them charges showed for do. So, okay, girl, that's how you got your ass put in jail the last time by saying shit on camera like you ain't give a fuck. 
Stop the girl. But anyways, KK and her pretty much have a talk. And she basically let me know, like, you know, you got to break the cycle. Um, you know what I'm saying? Which is true. You do have to break the cycle, especially time you got two daughters. And they watching this, too. You want this cycle to continue because when they get older, you want them to treat you the same way your mama treated you? She's right on that. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I agree with KK on that. Like, you got to break the cycle, especially with how your mama is. That's your mama. That's still the woman that brought you into this world. She could have aborted you. She could have swallowed you. So I'm, I'm just saying, I felt where KK was coming from in that sense. And, you know, KK really care about her. You know, KK and that damn, I swear that dog look like it's dead and it's just stuck, but whatever. You know, she's talking about, you know, she can go see Scrout. And she don't want to see, you know, she don't want to see uh, Tommy there because she can't go see Tommy because she a felon. They're going to put a clink clink, you know. But, you know, Tommy like, all right, she going to put a pen in there, come back to that later, but... The Red Rooster, she coming after the Red Rooster because of the shit that she did with, you know, disaster and lackluster before he went to jail. But I felt where KK was coming from, that was never your friend. And while you worrying about revenge and get back, girl, you need to worry about doing what's best for you. Because trust me, you let, let karma run this course instead of you trying to do it because it can easily fall back on you. But whatever, Tommy going to do whatever she want to do. And we all know this is just acting at its worst to me. I'm just saying scripted as shit. So let's get to some more shit. All right, next we see that uh, pretty much Stevie's uh, daughter, Savannah, and her cute little daughter, that dog is so cute, they move back in, and she didn't tell Stevie nothing. She talking about she going to school online and all of this stuff. Stevie, you better than you better than my parents, because if that would have been me, my dad would have been like, oh, hell no, you not. Not speaking to me first. You ain't going to be staying up in here. And wh what's school? I ain't talked to your mama. You better than me. And then when she had her friend coming around the corner, all up in the refrigerator, like, bro, man, like Stevie said, hell no. You and your friend would have had to get the fuck out. I'm just saying, that's how my peoples do. You do not drop in unannounced and then bring guests that you don't tell them about. I'm just saying. But you sure do got a lot of mouth to worry about what Jocelyn and them doing. But you need to worry about yourself. I'm sorry. I understand she's 18, but she's still 18 and she's still in high school or whatever. She hasn't graduated yet. So she needs to stay in that place instead of worrying about what's going on with you. Regardless if she was there or not. That's between grown people, okay, that's not still living underneath their parents' roof. I'm just saying that's just how I feel. I couldn't have did that with my people because I would have put the fuck out, especially if I ain't let them know and I got my shit everywhere and I'm bringing a friend too and don't even tell them. We don't play that shit in the Rawls house. No, we don't. It's called call first, ask me, and then we'll see. Because the fact that you dropping off without even speaking to me, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a quick way to get your ass straight to a hotel and then you try that again and then we'll see. All about respect, and we see little Savannah ain't got a little that much respect because for her to feel that it's okay to bring her friend and then have us shit everywhere. Okay, girl, better than me, better than me. Good luck with that. I'm glad you know you're taking your little online classes. You know, do what you gotta do, but you still should talk to your daddy first. That's all I have to say. But hey, it is what it is. Good luck with that. Let's get to some more shit. All right, so pretty much after all that, we see the whole um, family meeting with, you know, Mama D, Ernie Mama, of course, Scrappy come, Bambi ain't there, you know, they still beefing right now, and Scrappy don't feel like it's a good idea. And I'm like, okay, well, they all talking, and I must say, uh, I like the way Ernie, you know, my, um, Ernie, Ernie, <laughs> Ernie's mama sort of handled Mama D, letting her know, like, look, you don't tell me what to talk to about my son, which is true, just like you Set up here and how you was acting with all them other females with Scrappy. You don't tell her what to do with her son. But I must have fell out when she brought that damn diaper, that bib, and everything. Like, Mama D, you was doing the most. Doing way the most. And you don't talk to somebody's mother like that. Mother-in-law or not. That is still his mother. You cannot compare yourself to his mom. I'm sorry. She brought him into this world. You was a meddling mother yourself. So how you gonna call her a monster-in-law? Like she said, she asked him if he's not busy, can he help him? So so she said on this thing, and I'm just going by what she said. What you getting mad for, Mama D? You did the same exact thing. That's why I'm not feeling Mama D in this whole thing. Like, you think you can do shit to people and it's not going to come back to you, baby? Newsflash, every action has a reaction. What goes around comes around. Your old ass should know that. I'm just saying, Mama D. You done did it plenty of times to Scrappy. But whatever, Miss Bessie, you handled yourself very, very, very well. And I'm going to pray for y'all because, um, Ernie, check your wife. 
check your wife, okay? Just like everybody was like, you know, scrapping me, check his mama and how that relationship don't look. I don't see nothing wrong with what Ernie is doing until, from what I see, I don't see nothing wrong. I feel like Mama D just want to be in control and want to be number one. Newsflash, it don't work like that, okay? It does not work like that. Sorry, Mama D. It is what it is. But, hey, I still felt like when she bought that diaper and that bib out and all that shit. Good luck to y'all with that. Let's get to some more shit. Alright, so after that whole little fiasco where she gave him that onesie called take and take at gmail.com, Mama D, you a damn fool, but I'm sorry you was out of line and I felt where Bessie was coming from. You do not tell me how to talk to my child who I birthed. I'm just saying. But we see Rashida meeting up with, uh, you know, the rooster. Rashida, you look good, though. You look good. And I don't know what the hell... Red Rooster had on, I feel like she wanted to say, you know, yes, sir. That's, I just feel like that's what she wanted to do with that outfit, but whatever. She meeting up with, uh, you know, the Rooster to talk about the whole situation. And I'm with Rashida, like, knowing that you met up with her is like, the fuck? Like, I, I, I feel that, you know, I feel that. So they all talking. She basically spilled the beans about, you know, she seen the tape. Uh, the baby, the uh, the worm, and you know has been around baby Carter. Bunny head done been at the house. Bunny head got her in the um in their own building, paying the bills. Basically spilled all the beans to Rashida. Rashida looked good with that makeup on. I tell you that much, and that was cute. Get it, girl? She always looked good. And you know she started getting her feelings. I was wondering why was the rooster crying though. But then again, we all know. I ain't seen not one tear fall from her, but we okay, whatever. So she's all upset or whatever. She's talking about she wouldn't wish that on anybody, and I understand. But it's just hard for me to believe that this is real because, no, like I'm, 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 I'm sorry, but she there ain't no way me and my spouse is gonna sit up here and be on national TV and I'm constantly getting embarrassed. You've been in, you've been getting embarrassed in season two. It's hard for me to believe that this shit is real, but whatever. I feel like you're just doing this for. For money because you ain't got nothing else to do i mean i understand your store is still doing well but obviously that ain't pulling you know pulling in too much if you're willing to put your business out there like that but whatever so after that bunion head come back to the house she did uncooked and everything but bunion head already feel the tension like damn what's going on yeah you in trouble motherfucker you in trouble so she's basically talking to her letting know, letting him know Everything that pretty much that the Red Rooster told her about, you know, the worm and how he doing this and doing that. And we see pretty much him like, hmm. And that's pretty much how it go off. And I'm like, well, damn. I want to see what's going on next week because I'm pretty sure the bunny head going to, you know, admit to it or whatever. But that's pretty much how it ended, y'all. Um, this episode was okay. It was okay. It wasn't as it wasn't as eh, like the first one was, but we all know how that is. You know how the Dementor got to do. But anyways, y'all, I want to give a special shout out to my daddy because he helped me out. Now I can get back to my Real Housewives of Atlanta reviews because I got a lot to catch up on before this Sunday hits. So I'm gonna hit you know hit with that. Uh, well, at least try. I don't believe I could do it tomorrow because I can watch a little bit at work on my thing. But let me stop talking about all like that. But anyway, shout out to you, Dad. Thank you so much for helping me out. You already know what you did. I love you so much and I miss you. But anyways, y'all, that's the end of my review. I'm Miss Tink. That's M-I-Z-Z, not M-I-S-S. You already know the channel's not your post. This is the TV, y'all. I'm going to have to get up out of here. I'm going to upload this while I'm at work because I got to go pick up my medicine before I go to work. You know how that does. Deuces. Bye.